Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder, and this is the update for Tropical Storm Barrel, now a tropical storm just on the tip of the coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula, wind 65 miles per hour, moving west-northwest at 15 miles per hour. That's forward speed slowing down a little bit too. But the most important thing and in, in new development, Jeff, uh, Na uh, National Hurricane Center just came out with their update. And we now have a hurricane watch and a storm surge watch, which stretches from Sargent, Texas, all the way down to the mouth of the Rio Grande River. And you can see the anticipated landfall right now is Monday afternoon. Uh, wouldn't be too fixed on that exact time because, well, for one thing, the effects from this storm are going to be felt way beyond that and um, will start prior to that. We, we're going to look at that graphic as well. We'll, we'll see the tropical storm force winds starting to affect the coastline sometime Sunday, maybe late Sunday morning into Sunday evening. But uh, yes, we now have a hurricane watch in effect for... Uh, a good portion of the state of Texas. This thing's still going to track across the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, of course, the waters are very warm out there and it'd be interesting to see uh, what this what this storm does when it get, gets close to land, Jeff. Yeah, so we can look at the satellite. This is the infrared today. And initially, your, your eyes kind of drawn here to this area here, uh, exiting now the northeastern coast of the, or the northern coast of the Yucatan. We don't have a lot of good observations here of where exactly the center is. So um, honestly, we're going to be depending a lot on recon here in the next few hours because it's really, really important on, on where the center is going to exit the coast. And so I think this is probably not the low level center up here. I think the low level center is maybe a little bit further to the south and west here. Um, but this is unfortunately for the Texas and upper Texas coast further to the north. Um, than the models were projecting. You know, they were kind of indicating over, right. you know, on the west side of the, the coast of the Yucatan. And unfortunately, it looks like further to the north. And so that has resulted today in a continued rightward or eastward shift in the track guidance. And you can see the National Hurricane Center here in the, in the black dots is along the western side of the consensus or the average that goes in um, kind of around the Rockport, Port Aransas area right now. Um, the, the, the issue we have here with the, with the track guidance is the angle of approach on the lower Texas coast. And so uh, with, the with, the, with the hurricane coming in, the tropical storm, eventually again a hurricane coming in from the southeast and then south-southeast, that's almost parallel to the lower um, Texas coast. So instead of coming in at a perpendicular angle, very small track changes, we're talking tens of miles, make a really big difference on potentially where this will come inland. Um, and this is the, the guidance of the average or the consensus over the last 24 hours. You can see um, there has been a very clear eastward and northward shift in the guidance trend here over the last 24 hours. Um, this is the, the darkest line is the latest, which is, is, is east a right of the National Hurricane Center forecast. And so we're talking, if you if you look at this, this is Rockport, Port Aransas, maybe even north of there, getting, you know, very close to the sea drift area. Um, and it, this may not be quite done shifting to the right. And so uh, mid-Texas coast, coastal bend, you know, Corpus Christi, um, even down here on the lower coast, even though the track is shifting to the right, it may come up and graze you and you could get some nasty conditions down here on the lower coast before mm -hmm. it actually makes landfall uh, further up the coast. So this is something we have not dealt with on the Texas coast in a long time, a hurricane that kind of almost, if you, I mean, if you kind of look at the whole scheme here, it, it's kind of in the shape of the Texas coast. So it kind of comes in at the lower part and kind of mm -hmm. rounds about to the north and the east. A little bit of good news today with respect to the motion. As you can see here, we're not expecting it to slow as much um, in Texas as it was earlier today. So it connects better with this trough, probably likely a stronger, a stronger system that connects better with the trough. So maybe not quite as much of the flooding rainfall potential. Um, I certainly wouldn't deny or disregard that flood potential just yet. I think we're going to get some big rainfalls here in southeast and eastern Texas with this. 
But the good news is it looks like it's going to keep on moving to the north and the east. It's not going to stall or, or linger about. Um, unfortunately, that connection with the trough is what is dragging that track a little bit further to the east with time. And so, you know, if I'm in Matagorda Bay, Palacios, Port Lavaca, Port O'Connor, I am I am concerned at this point for you. Uh, Rockport, Port Aransas, even down to the Corpus Christi area, this whole area right here could see very significant impacts as we get into Monday, and you need to be executing uh, your hurricane plan at this time in those locations. Yeah, and even though no evacuations have been officially announced yet, we could see those coming pretty soon. Yeah, I, it's very important that, that people listen to their local officials and right. heed any uh, recommendations and actions that they are suggesting. Um, we'll talk about the, the storm surge here in a minute, which the evacuation decision is based on. Yeah. Um, but whatever your local uh, officials are saying, you need to heed. Yeah, so here are the uh, tropical storm force winds, the wind guidance. Now, um, those percentages really increasing there for the middle part of the Texas coast. You can see also the tropical storm force winds and the light green shaded area going uh, deep really into the state of Texas. But the bulk of the winds starting really Sunday morning, you'll start to we'll start to see those tropical storm force winds Sunday morning along the Texas coast and then moving inland from there and then uh, really ramping up towards Sunday night and then into Monday. Yeah, what's what's interesting about this is, you know, the difference between about Port Isabel and say Palacios is about the same right now right. Um, with respect to the <laughs> probabilities of tropical storm force winds. And again, this is a function of the track because of this turn, we could get 40 sustained 40 mile an hour winds at South Padre Island in Brownsville and also on Galveston Island with this track. And so the timing is a little bit different earlier in the day on Sunday on the South Texas, lower Texas coast uh, toward Monday morning on the mid and potentially the upper Texas coast. And I do believe as we go forward in time, we are going to see those those watches, maybe not hurricane, but tropical storm watches extended uh, further up the Texas coast to include probably Galveston Island and, and some portions of the upper coast here because those probabilities continue to increase. Yeah, and here are the uh, rainfall totals again. These are seven day totals and this is uh, shifted as well as expected more toward uh, East Texas and, and Northeast Texas now in that range of six inches to seven inches and uh, the hill country, the, this particular model really built backing off of what's expected out there. But uh, Definitely going to see a lot of rain. We could see these numbers jump up as well as we progress, but that is a pretty big shift, not only just to the east yet, but also to the north so from what we saw this morning. Yeah, again, here, here comes the system. So near the center to the east is the wet side of this. So this is yeah. this is going to be the kind of the wet, the wet area over here, southeast Texas. Um, northeast Texas. Again, this is this is barrel coming in and also interacting with the trough over the state. Um, you know, I think these numbers are probably a little bit on the conservative side, but yes, if you just look at the spatial coverage, I mean, this is a very large area of four to six inches of rain. There is going to be isolated amounts in here that are going to be significantly higher, um, especially probably coastal bend into South Texas. And, and the reason I'm saying that is this is very favored for the bands coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and those can really produce a lot of rainfall in a short period of time. So um, while the focus is sort of on the wind and how much it's going to strengthen and, and all that kind of stuff, the inland rainfall threat and flood threat here is, is going to be a threat as we go, not only into early, but middle next week and, and, and likely even late in the week with, with the river systems that we have that are going to drain down. And, and just to kind of cover a little bit of the storm surge, uh, this is early. This is the first pass at this, if you will, based on the track, based on the intensity, uh, three to five feet above normally dry, dry ground near the coast from Sargent down to uh, South Padre Island. And so for those of you up here in Matagorda Bay, Matagorda County, Sargent, this is, this is higher a foot or two higher than what we saw were with Alberto back in June. 
And um, right now we're expecting the upper Texas coast. This graphic doesn't show it, but on the upper Texas coast, two to four feet above normally dry ground, Bazoria County, San Luis Pass, Galveston Island, Galveston Bay, Bolivar Peninsula as we get into Monday. And that is about what we saw with Alberto. That could go higher. We could uh, see that trend higher, especially if the track shifts a little bit to the east or this comes in a little bit stronger. And, and one thing I just want to make sure that uh, we're understanding here is there probably will not be a lot of intensification tomorrow in the Gulf of Mexico. So Barrel's going to take some time to rebuild that core as it comes off the Yucatan. But as this comes up to the coast, that last 18 hours or so, as this approaches the Texas coast, conditions are looking very, very favorable for strengthening. And so we could see some rapid intensification as this comes up to the coast in the, in the very last portion of this, uh, in that period of time from Sunday afternoon to evening to Monday, as this approaches the coast. And so I don't want people to sleep on, oh, this is just a category one or maybe a category two. We could potentially be looking at a major hurricane on the middle Texas coast as we get into Monday. And, and this could happen at the kind of at the very last minute um, where all the conditions really become favorable. So you need to be preparing Matagorda Bay down towards Corpus Christi, even the lower Texas coast for the impact of potentially category two or category three hurricane with respect to the winds. Yeah. And uh, just a reminder, Otis, you know, last hurricane season went from a tropical storm to a category five in, in a very short amount of time. I'm not suggesting this is going to get to that strength, but uh, uh, like you mentioned, Jeff, it can rapidly intensify. So uh, good advice there to not rest on, on the uh, tropical storm status of this particular storm as it gets closer to the Texas coastline. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for watching. Of course, subscribe and share the Weather Insights YouTube podcast so you and your family can stay informed on the latest with Barrel. And we will have another update tomorrow morning shortly after 8 a.m. Until then, thank you very much. And we'll see you on the next Weather Insights podcast.